Well, good morning. Thanks for tuning in for your word for the day today. My name is Robert. I hope you've been enjoying our series of Journey to Freedom. We're looking at the Israelites' journey to freedom from their slavery in Egypt, while also looking at some of our personal stories of journeying toward freedom in Christ, uh, going through some of our staff and our uh, volunteer leaders. And you know, through this process, we're spending a considerable amount of time in the Old Testament book of Exodus. And my hope is that you're reading along with us because we can't always read and cover every verse of every chapter that we cover, especially today. So I want to encourage you to go read Exodus chapter 12 on your own. But as we do this, you may be the type that wishes we would get back to the New Testament to read more about Jesus. And, you know, I'll publicly admit that I favor the New Testament for that reason. I'd rather read and, and process and think about the person of Jesus and his life and ministry. But when I'm in the Old Testament, I'm reminded of how great it is because of the foreshadowing of Jesus. That is, we see the early promises of God in the Old Testament that tell of the coming Messiah in Jesus' future ministry. And sometimes this is direct prophecy, starting as early as Genesis chapter 3. Uh, and sometimes it's indirect when you get to study and connect the dots. And I think that's the case for us today. So as we look at Exodus 12, let me again encourage you to go read it, but we're going to connect the dots on two topics. Uh, and these topics repeatedly show up in the life and ministry of Jesus. Because first, Jesus was regularly called the Lamb of God. This was a, a phrase and a name that was commonly associated with him. This started first with John the Baptist, as John calls Jesus the, the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world when, when John first kind of proclaimed Jesus at public ministry, and it stuck. And we'll get more into the significance of that later on as we look at some of the practices of the sacrificial system in the Old Testaments, but its roots will be seen here today. Additionally, as you read through the Gospels, there's this pull of Jesus to be in Jerusalem for Passover. And beyond it being a Jewish tradition and holiday, you get the sense that there's a greater significance there for Jesus. In fact, it was during Passover that Jesus has the Last Supper with the disciples, and that night is arrested by the Pharisees and starts the journey to the cross. And so you have the sense that there's a further significance there for Jesus than it just being a holiday. But you may be thinking, what is Passover? Well, I'm glad you ask. Uh, and as we look at Exodus chapter 12, it outlines this event. I encourage you to read the chapter that I'm going to summarize. But as God was taking the nation of Egypt through the series of plagues, they're about to have the 10th and final plague, and we'll look at that tomorrow, so I won't share too much. But the plague was the death of the firstborn of every household. This is significant. It's more than just an inconvenience and some gnats or some flies. This is death, death of the people that you cared about. But God told Moses to do this. He says they were to take a perfect and spotless lamb and kill it. And they would take some of the blood and paint the doorposts of their hosts and then make a feast with the meat with the, and also make some unleavened bread. And they were to stay in their house all night. And that night, Scripture says that the Lord passed through Egypt with the death and the blood on the doorposts would indicate that these homes were inhabited by God's people. And the Lord would pass over these houses and not bring death into those households. Hence the title of Passover, as that process of death passed over those houses. And this is exactly what happened that evening. As they were given these instructions, they were also told to make this an annual tradition as a way to remember God's provision and protection for them. <laughs> and no doubt, if my family was saved from that series of an event, I would want to remember and celebrate and praise God for that. But as we read through this story, it's not only an amazing story of God's provision for his people, it's also an indicator of Jesus, who would be the permanent Passover lamb. His bloodshed is what allows death to pass over us at the end of our life. And it's the good news that we get to celebrate, not on an annual basis, but on a daily basis. We get to remember and celebrate that Jesus gave his life and allowed his blood to be shed so that all of us who are in Christ, who believe that Jesus is the Son of God and Savior of the world, who believe that he lived a perfect and sinless life and died for us, and we respond and confess him to be our Savior, we get to daily celebrate that death is not the end for us. That the terrible news of death will at some point have a physical effect on us, but it will not have a spiritual effect on us, and we will be with Jesus for all eternity. So let me encourage you today to celebrate that the Lamb of God has come in the person of Jesus so that sin and death and hell would pass over you and that you would have good news to celebrate on a daily basis. We'll see you next time, Calvary.